Good morning and welcome as we zoom in and a few people have gathered. Um, it's amazing, the best laid uh, plans of mice and men and uh, snow just seems to trump everything uh, that we may have planned out. It's great to be uh, together electronically or in person and uh, it's a beautiful day but we didn't know yesterday what today might bring so we erred on the side of caution and um, we are here virtually and a few folks in person. We have a few announcements to make, uh, quite a few actually. Um, while our parking lot is nicely plowed, um, we are in need of someone who will do some snow removal on the sidewalks. Um, if anyone from the congregation is interested, we thought we'd put that out there first before we go outside to find one, someone who will uh, uh, do that service for us. If you're interested in uh, coming in early on a Sunday and doing our sidewalks, um, please uh, call the office this week. Also, Broadview Magazine, many of you are subscribers, some of you are not. It is the, uh, um, the official magazine of the United Church of Canada. It, uh, it's a great, I think it's a great magazine because whether I agree with articles or not, it always makes me think. It may make you feel very affirmed, it may make you feel a little agitated, but it'll always make you think. If you're interested, subscriptions, if we do them in a group, are a little cheaper, and it's only $25 for the year. So if you want it, again, please call Lori. You're going to call Lori for a lot this week um, if you're interested. Also, Open Arms Mission. They have been uh, blessed with a whole bunch of food from the, uh, the gathering in the last few weeks, but they need help sorting. So if you can, it's a one-time volunteer thing. If you can help them, again, either call them, Open Arms Mission on 3rd Street in Welland, or give Lori a call and um, she'll give you the details or set you up. This week on Wednesday, Coats for Kids begins. Because of space restrictions this year, we are only doing coats and winter clothing for children. So um, we're, we'll be set up in the church house Wednesday to Saturday this week and Wednesday to Saturday next week from 1 to 3 um, in the church house. If you can help, most of the slots have been filled, but it, there's a few that still need some volunteers. So if you can help, please sign the list downstairs um, in, the, uh, in the hallway right by the kitchen or see Heather Grundy. Coming up, What's the date for Joseph? December 3rd, 2 p.m. December 3rd, 2 p.m. If you are interested in seeing Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, which is a fantastic Broadway show that depicts the life of, of Joseph and his brothers, um, tickets are, I believe, $25 for churches if in groups of six or more. So if you are interested, it's not too late. Please, see, uh, please call Lori again this, uh, this week. One other thing, yesterday, the fellowship hall looked fantastic. I saw things, I didn't make it in. Uh, we in Crystal Beach got about three times the amount of snow you got here in Welland. Um, and I was told, don't try and come in. So I didn't. Uh, but I saw on Facebook so many great vendors and things that uh, I would have spent money on for sure, including lunch. Because it was so poorly attended because of the, the snow, they're going to do a repeat performance next Saturday. So if you couldn't get out last yesterday, please mark it on your calendar for this Saturday, uh, the 26th, from 9 to, 9 to 3. One last announcement, and this is more of a personal thing. Um, you know, there are just some people in, in life that, that go above and beyond. This morning I was up quite early and surveying my driveway and I must say it drifted in much more than I anticipated. So I thought, am I gonna kill myself, my shoulder and my back and try and shovel this myself or am I gonna call for help? Well, I called for help and I had two responses. Um, the one who came quicker, um, his name is Rob Smith. Now Rob's a young man in, in uh, Ridgeway with two beautiful little boys and a lovely wife, and they're just a great family. 
and he happened to be friends with my nephew Peter for many, many years. So uh, Rob came to my rescue so this preacher could get to the church. And I want to give a, a shout I don't know if he'll hear it, but I want to give a shout out to Rob Smith and thank you and bless you for helping me out. And just after he had left, I heard a knock on my back door and there was Grayson um, who also came to help out. And he was kind of looking around with his shovel thinking, okay, it's all done. What am I doing here? <laughs> he didn't get the message that Rob had come. So uh, again, Grayson, you will probably hear this. Thank you for coming to my rescue and you'll probably be called again. I think those, I think those are, oh yes, a reminder, uh, today is Christ the King Sunday, so at home, um, wh whatever communion elements you would like to use, because they are just symbols, um, please get them ready, uh, perhaps during one of the songs, but following the, following the message, we will break bread together and um, share communion as we always do. Those are the announcements, so let's continue to pray. As we light the candle of peace in the colors of the flag of Ukraine. Let's pray. Our God, we come upon Advent. This week marks the celebration of reign of Christ, Christ the King. And often when we think of kings in historical contexts, we think of power and conquering and, and war. But while you are Christ the King, you are also Prince of Peace. And we bring those two beautiful ideas of who our sovereign is as we pray for peace in Ukraine. May during this Advent season, Prince, Christ as Prince of Peace dominate the hearts and minds of those in Russia and those in Ukraine, and may, may there be peace in their lands. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read responsibly our call to worship. We have come to the end of a journey. We look for baby Jesus in a palace. But Jesus was not there. We looked for Jesus in all the respectable places. We look for Jesus in the tomb. But Jesus was not there. He had been we continue to look for Jesus. Let us open ourselves to the presence of the holy in this place today. Let's follow the words on the screen, or for those of you who are here, grab your hymnals and turn to number 213, Rejoice, the Lord is King. And Kim and Lori will lead us in our, in our songs.
may be seated. Let's pray together. God of tender mercy, we thank you. We live in difficult times. There are moments when your kingdom seems to be far away. Many of us face struggles in our lives and need what your kingdom promises. Yet, in this time, prayer, you are close to us. Your presence touches us and invites us to have hope. Hope grounded in the wonder of being loved by you. Amen. I know the choir um, had prepared a beautiful song for this morning, but they're not here. So um, instead, I uh, asked Aaron when I chatted with him last night if he knew a certain song that's not necessarily in a, a, of a religious sort, but it fits in beautifully with the message. And it's a song by Sarah McLaughlin, Canada's own Sarah McLaughlin, called I Will Remember You. So I think most of you know it, um, but enjoy the music of the song I Will Remember You. No problem, we have a technological problem. So I will ask Victoria to come and share the children's time and we'll just uh, switch the order. Hello. Ooh, hello. Alrighty, I almost had my own technological problems. But that's okay, okay. So I'm not gonna ask anybody to come up here with me. It's okay, I understand. But you all have to participate anyway. So this is a quiz. It's always a quiz. When you think of Jesus, what do you think of? What images or symbols come to your mind? Birthday, Birthday buddy. Well, okay. If you're born on Christmas, I guess that makes sense. The Good Shepherd. The good shepherd. Anyone? Washing the, Washing the feet of disciples. Light of the world. All right. Fish. All right, all right. So I... Walking on water. Okay. I have gathered a couple of symbols here together. Let me see if I can do this without making a mess. The big reveal. Ooh, only a little bit of a mess. So yes, we have the symbol of the fish. Good job, good job. I have, there's not actually any water in this bowl, but washing of the feet. I have a cross, all of that, nobody mentioned the cross. I got the star, which I will hold as light of the world, leading the way. The big shepherd's crook, that's what made the biggest mess here. There we go. And also, a crown for Christ the King. And that's not an image that we use very often, I guess. But um, it is one of our, our symbols of what Jesus means to us. Christ the King. And is, today is our Christ the King Sunday. Which is, um, I know, another one of those special days of the United Church that we've been going through a lot of lately. It is the last Sunday of the year. And I know you're thinking it's not the end of the year yet, but it's the end of the church year so that we can start Advent and Christmas anew. And we are going to celebrate this last day by participating in communion together. So those of you that need to get your communion together, now is a good time. And uh, we're all going to commune together.
Thank you, Aaron. This is the time in the service where we lift our joys and our concerns um, to the Lord. Um, are there any prayer requests from those who are Zooming in? If you can let Marcus know, and he'll relay it to me. Okay. All right, let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for snow because it slows us down and it reminds us of your transformative power. That only a week ago we were looking at green grass and waiting for the last of the leaves to drop and and still raking our, our yards to prepare for what we've had in the last few days. Thank you for the reminder that as we come before you, we are white as snow because of your sacrifice, because of your love. We thank you, O oh God, for those who have gathered, both electronically, who are here in person, those who will follow the service later on today and this week. We thank you for community and the community here at Central United, a church that has shared the good news of your message for over 160 years. We pray that you would give us vision and courage and creativity as we face the next years of ministering here in downtown Welland. Thank you, O oh God, for this privilege, for all the blessings in our lives. And we pray the same for St. John's United of Georgetown and Glen Williams. We ask that you would bless these congregations as they too minister in an area that is thriving and growing that used to be sleepy little rural towns and are now the farther edge of the GTA. Bless them, may they be a place of love and of acceptance. For those who are grieving the loss of those who have passed away, we think of Sharon Freeman and the loss of her brother this past, these past two weeks, and we pray for Larry's family, the Skelton family, as they grieve the loss of this husband and father and brother. Thank you for his life, and thank you that his suffering was not extended, but in your mercy you have taken him home. We pray for the Firetag family too, as they have lost their mom, and we ask that you would bless Mark and Chris and Dana and Leah. No matter how old we are, oh God, we never miss, we never stop missing our moms. So May your spirit bring comfort to these families who have lost so much in the last few weeks. We also want to lift up Ross and Karen and Roland and Jim and Mike and Steve and Sharon and Carol and Beate, Carolyn and Barb, Jim and Lori and Kelly and Jeannie, Crystal, Cynthia, Heather, Dina, Jessica, Donna, and Annika. Oh God, again, we thank you for these dear people, and you know their needs, you know what they are facing, and you know um, how they are dealing with any side effects. So we ask your blessing upon them as they walk this path. May we be a support and be Jesus to them. We thank you, O oh God, for all the, again, all the blessings in our lives, the excitement of the Advent season, the, the Santa Claus parade, the the decorating of the church and the kids' service next week and, and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and all the things we anticipate. We are reminded that you are, as cliche as it sounds, the reason for the season. So in the bustle and busyness, may we take those sacred, quiet moments to reflect on the baby in the manger who became... Christ the King. And we pray together the prayer that you have gifted us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Let's look to the screen and sing together a song that might be new for some of you, but has a beautiful uh, message for us. Christ has no body now but yours. Thank you now for the generosity that you display. And I want to particularly thank Victoria and Aaron and Lori and Marcus and Kim. Kim uh, showed up because we didn't have his number to call him, and so I put him to work. And uh, we're thankful to have him with us. For all of those of you who serve, who give, who give of your time and your talents so generously, we thank you. Let us pray. Oh, God, is so many serve served Queen Elizabeth II and we saw that in her recent funeral we are reminded that we all serve you we are your body and however we can do that whether it be with our time our talents or our treasure we give freely and generously and joyfully to you so that others may know the love and joy of knowing Jesus Christ Amen. This morning's reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes 
by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserved. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Holy wisdom, holy word. Good graphic, Marcus. Uh, I was going to go with the one-eyed, one-legged pony, but I figured that <laughs> What triggers memories for you? A song? A place? A card or a bit of poetry that you've tucked away in your night drawer that you come across every so often? Experts tell us that our olfactory senses, our sense of smell, is one of the most powerful triggers of memory that we have. When I was between denominations a few years back and worked for an HR company, I discovered a, a smell that brought back some great childhood memories with my dad. What was that smell, you ask? Manufactured steel. Kind of crazy, isn't it? But as part of my job, I would visit uh, places like uh, medium steel, medium and small steel factories like Well and Forge and actually the former Atlas Steel Building. And the scent of manufactured steel took me back to my childhood. Because every so often on a Saturday when the plant was not in operation, my dad would have to go into the office for something. And a lot of times he would take me along with him and take me into the plant and you couldn't get away with this now, but he'd put me on a, on a pallet on the fork of the, uh, of the um, what do you call it? Uh, lift truck, yeah, forklift, and, and take me on a very slow velocity trip around the plant and go up and down. And I mean, I was about seven, and this was just fantastic. And uh, so that smell, that steel smell, or steel plants all smell alike, takes me back to very happy memories of my childhood with my dad. And I think, I think dad would be pleased about how he was remembered and those little memories that he made. <sighs> Jesus, remember me. Those words from the thief on the cross echo a cry that rises deep within each one of us. We all know what it's like to be remembered and we sometimes know what it's like to be forgotten. Think of a time you were remembered. What happened? How did it feel? Maybe it was a phone call out of the blue, a letter, a gift, a visit, or a simple word. Maybe it was a surprise, or maybe it was what you'd been hoping for. Maybe it was as seemingly simple as someone recognizing you, looking in the eyes, and calling you by your name. Regardless of what it was or how it came about, it brought you some sense of life, of wholeness, of sometimes of healing. We all want to be remembered. It means that we matter, we belong, we exist, and our life is real. When we are remembered, someone else bears witness to all those things. There is life, presence, and relationship in being remembered. We know how important remembering is. And that's why a couple of weeks ago on Remembrance Day, we remembered by name those from this congregation and from all peoples who gave their lives for our freedoms. And their sacrifices should never be forgotten. 
when we are remembered, it is as if our life is being put back together, because it really is. That is exactly what is happening. We are being made whole people by Jesus. Despite the scattered pieces of our lives, things done and left undone, in the moment of being remembered, we are seen, we are recognized, we are known by name. We are alive and we are remembered. Compare that with a time when you were forgotten. What did that feel like? Have you ever sat in a restaurant waiting for someone who never showed up? Oh, they forgot. How about that person that looks at you, begins to speak, and you realize they have absolutely no idea who you are? We have our 45th class reunion this summer. I have a feeling some of that stuff's going to happen. How about that? Or maybe it's someone who forgot your birthday or your anniversary. You know the old joke. You know you're having a rough day when your twin sister forgets your birthday. Now, in those moments, you can feel alone, abandoned, afraid, wounded, maybe even angry. We're no longer sure of our place in that person's life and whether we even really belong there. Regardless of how or why it comes about, there's hurt and separation and isolation, a dismembering of the relationship and our life. No one wants to be forgotten or asks to be forgotten. Whether we speak it out loud or not, our cry is to be remembered. Every day we stand on the threshold between being remembered and being forgotten. And we also stand on the threshold of remembering and forgetting another. I'm not talking about the usual understanding of remembering and forgetting as a mental activity. This is more than recalling a past event or failing to stop at the grocery store on the way home to pick up milk. I'm speaking of remembering in the sense of joining the pieces together, putting the parts back together again as one. The opposite of remembering is dismembering, separation, pulling apart, tearing limb from limb. The thief on the cross wants to be re remembered, put back together again. He's not asking to simply be thought about, what good does that do him? He cries out, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus does not respond with, I'll think about you when I'm in paradise. I'll think about this day and I'll think about how tragic and sad your life is, but I won't do anything about it. That's neither what the thief is asking for nor what he needs. That's, what, that's not what we need or ask for. Just like the thief, we want to be remembered, to have the many pieces of our lives put back together. Our cry is to be remembered, is also a recognition and confession of our dismemberment. We have been dismembered. Pieces have been scattered and lost. Sometimes it happens through the circumstances of life, loss, grief, shattered dreams, disappointment, Regret, failures, the death of a loved one. Other times, it comes about through our actions, our words, and even our thoughts. Our life can become fragmented and broken. When that happens, we can easily become like the thief. We take what is not ours. We dismember others' lives in an attempt to put our own back together. It happens in all sorts of ordinary ways. Anger and resentment, criticism, ju judgment, envy, comparison and competition, gossip, bad-mouthing another, perfectionism, the need to be right or in control, busyness, excessive productivity and efficiency. Look at your relationships. Take stock. Wherever there is strain, hurt, brokenness, chances are that you or another are being dismembered, forgotten, torn apart. 
That is not the life God gave us. That's not God's dream or hope for us. That's not what it was like in the very beginning on the day of our creation. When God looked at all of creation, including us, and said, it is very good. Sometimes we don't even recognize our own dismembering. Listen to what the leaders, the soldiers, and the other thief in today's gospel says. Save yourself. Prove who you are and and save us. Well, they want a magic show. They want to escape their lives rather than have them put back together in a way they could never imagine. So they mock and deride Jesus. They demand proof. Those are all signs of their own dismemberment. They even divide, dismember, Jesus' clothing. In the midst of all of that, however, there is an ironic truth. It is the inscription hanging above Jesus, a sign of remembering, and one that Victoria reminded us of. This is the king of the Jews. It declares a remembering between the Jews and their king, between God and God's people between Jews and Gentile, between Jesus and us. The cross is the ultimate act of remembering. God in Christ joining and aligning himself with us in the pain and suffering of his life. Remembering is always an act of love. Every time we participate in the life of Christ by giving mercy, compassion, forgiveness, Every time we speak a word of hope and encouragement, every time we love without condition, expectation, or payment, every time we share our bread and live in communion with one another, even when those times when someone comes to plow your driveway in the nick of time, we participate in Christ's remembering of our own lives, the lives of each other and the life of the world. We do this in remembrance of Jesus. In those moments, we hear the promise of Jesus to the thief. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Paradise is the state of being remembered. It's what Jesus offers us and what we, in our remembering and living like Jesus, offer each other. Remembering is neither about the past or the future, It's about today, right now, right here. It is Jesus' presence with us and ours with him and each other. It's It's Jesus in whatever our circumstances of life might be. His answer, today you will be with me in paradise. Why is that the promise given on this Sunday? the last Sunday of the church's year. Why this gospel on this day? What prom- That promise that Jesus gives to the man on the cross beside him and to us is the hinge between the ending of this liturgical year and the beginning of the next. It stands between the crucifixion and the nativity. Ultimately, though it is the promise that joins the many different endings in our lives with a new beginning. In Christ's eyes, we are never forgotten and dismembered. We are forever and always remembered. Today you will be with me in paradise is Jesus' promise to each one of us this day and every day. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to partake in Holy Communion, let us uh, prepare as we sing together, um, let us break bread together.
One moment. On the last night he spent with his friends, Jesus took an age-old tradition of his people and transformed it into something new. He took bread, staple food of his land, blessed and broke it, and gave it to those around him, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, common drink of his people, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood. Each time you do this, remember me. By remembering Jesus in this way, we now claim our common heritage as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we come to this table, we are reminded that this is not the table of Central United, nor is it the table of the United Church of Canada or any particular denomination. It is the table of Jesus Christ, the family feast of the whole people of God. And all who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith and long to live justly in peace with their neighbor. You are welcome here. Let us eat, let us drink together for our strengthening in faith for the sake of the world. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath, that your love is constant and unfailing. We thank you for all that sustains life and especially for Jesus Christ, who teaches us how to live out an ethic of justice and peace and for the promise of transformation made manifest in his life, death, and resurrection. We ask you to bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, make, make us the body of Christ, that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all creation. Amen. <coughs> Please take whatever element you are using for your bread. And remember that in the symbol of this broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to being his disciples. Let us eat the bread, the body of Christ, together. symbol of the cup, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. Let's join together in prayer. Again, O oh God, we give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another. As we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread, may we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. Let's sing together number 330, 
a reminder that whatever monarchy, whatever happens with monarchies in the world, Jesus shall always reign. Before we end the service, I have an important announcement to make. Um, first, a little story. Before I came to Central, I was, you may sit, those who of you who are here, you may sit. Um, I was uh, running around like a maniac because I had three jobs. Um, I worked at People's Memorial in Ridgeway, very part-time. I worked at a, gro um, a jewelry store, and I worked for uh, the local um, funeral home on a part-time basis. Three jobs are tough because you're always running in a different direction. You never get a day off and you're always thinking about the next thing. Well, such has been the, the experience of our beloved Christian and youth director, Victoria. And I knew we couldn't keep her forever. I knew this day was come, would come. I'm glad it didn't come sooner but I, I sadly announce that uh, Victoria is leaving us um, under the best of circumstances because we don't want you to go, but we certainly understand focusing your, your gifts and your efforts um, in two places that are geographically pretty close to one another. So Victoria will continue to serve the good people at St. John Stevensville as well as the Embrace Center, which is a ministry of St. John Stevensville in Fort Erie, and um, the Ridgeway BIA. So let me say, and there'll be a few things happening in the next few weeks, but we will miss you. We are blessed to have had you. And I'm going to start to cry. We all are. We all are. <laughs> <sighs> okay, and with that, receive this blessing. As we go from this place, O oh God, may we be ambassadors of your love, of your remembering, of bringing wholeness to a broken world and healing to those in pain. May we follow the words that you gave to that thief so long ago on the cross and you give to us each day. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.